Hello to everyone and good morning. It is 8 a.m. and we are here starting the new week, strong in the faith. Why? Because we have God with us. You have been watching our programs every single day. You know that we begin our day with prayer. We begin our day in the presence of God. That gives us the strength to face our difficulties, our challenges, our hardships. Doesn't matter how big or small the problem is, if we have the presence of God, we have the motivation, the power to move forward. Because if we don't have God, what are we left with? We are left with our despair. We are left with negative words, condemnations from what people have said, even professionals in the fields that we are trying to seek help in have said. But when we have God, we have the one who said, be strong and courageous. He said to us that you are the light of the world. So we'll never be lost. We'll never be in the dark. We'll always have direction. But if you feel far from God or you feel that your faith is not as strong as it used to be or strong at all, I'd like to invite you to give us a call on our helplines where a man of God will be ready to answer you, pray for you, help you in whatever that you're going through. Give us a call on 9602-9837. And you can find out more 
about how we can help you. As I said, when we have God's presence, we are strong. And speaking of God's presence, watch this testimony and see the difference of this person before they received God in their life and the after. And we'll be right back. What's been keeping you up at night? Problems at work? Bad news? Arguments with your partner? Discouragement? We're available to talk to you right now. Call us 9602-9837. Faith itself has helped me quite a lot since I've embraced faith in terms of making changes for my own self. Today, I'm not gonna lie, my life is completely blessed. I'm really happy. I've got such a wonderful marriage. People look at my marriage as an example, even at work. Um, my relationship with my work colleague is amazing. My relationship with my mother is <laughs> amazing. <laughs> we have such love such talk. My life has been transformed now for 13 years. Faith itself has helped me quite a lot since I've embraced faith in terms of making changes for my own self. I remember there were moments in times where things were really, really down, but through faith, learning how to put those into action, into practice, I had to fight against, fight against those thoughts that came to my mind in order to put certain actions into faith to bring my life to where it is today. I'm telling you this because I faced it in the past. I faced loneliness. I faced abuse. I faced situation where it felt like I was in a hold and I, I couldn't see a way out. I went through a situation in the past where I was facing abuse. I had to physically took my child and run from the city that I was in into a different city. My mom, she didn't knew, but she knew that I was distancing myself from her. And because of that, we didn't have a relationship. We didn't really communicate with each other. And that just left that mother empty space inside of me because where I needed my mom to tell her and explain to her and wanted her to comfort me through, I didn't had that. I found out through about the Universal Church through my best friend and her bringing me to the church has brought such a huge transformation inside me. It's like a weight that's been lifted off my shoulder. To be universal for me, it means I can overcome. It means it's going from faith to faith, knowing where you're going and aiming high to achieve. The purpose in me seeing changes um, when I started using my faith, there was times when I faced brick walls. There were times when I thought that I was never gonna overcome. It felt like there were doors that I was knocking and those doors weren't being opened. But for me, it just pushed me even more through the words that I've been receiving about faith, exercising my faith, never to give up, not by what I see, but believing that the changes and the transformation was going to happen. When I started to see the results, um, I couldn't believe it. Not that I was in doubt, but I started seeing changes through my behavior, through my reaction. Things that I would always allow to push me down or to put me back. I've started to overcome those thoughts. When I started seeing changes in myself, in my own life, I wanted to grab every single soul that I could find, just to give them the opportunity, the opportunity for them to receive what I've received. There was charity events that would, would take place. I will go out, I will push myself forward. The importance of having the Holy Spirit inside, he gives me the assurance he gives me the words, the things that I need in order to overcome spiritually, in order to reach the goal, the main goal that we need, which is salvation. Today, I've seen myself not doubtful. I used to be very doubtful about who I was, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to be. I hold no grudges inside of the past hurt that I've went through. Today, my mouth is used for something positive rather than something negative. Being part of the Universal Church has been the greatest stepping stone for me. Learning and meeting and knowing the people inside the Universal Church would help me in my faith has been one of the greatest thank you that I can say, honestly speaking, because today my life is truly transformed. When we have God in our life, we are on top of things. We have self-control. We know where we are going. We know where we stand. 
Because when we have God, we have a cornerstone, a stone that will support us in our very difficult days, a stone that will give us foundation on the floor beneath us so that we do not fall when the earth quakes. This is a, a kind of a poetry, but it is real. For example, if you are watching me and you are sick, your stone who is God can heal you. So you are on firm ground. If you're facing marriage problems, problems with, between your partner and relationship uh, wise, God has given us directions, counsels to give us the best marriage possible. So you're on firm ground. If you are a person who has insomnia, can't sleep at night, has difficulties trying to concentrate or do things in life, you have a short uh, focus span. You, you know, you look, you try to start a project, but then you end up quitting along the way. You go and you say, you know, this time I'm going to do this or do that. And then you pull away a couple days, weeks later, and you time waste. And that frustrates you. That gets you on the negative because you think, well, what am I doing with my life? Well, God, the stone in our life, He can show you the right way to do something, give you the strength for it, and He can even provide you a purpose that's fulfilling in life. This is the God that we believe in. But as a stone that can keep us firm on the ground, He does alert us for a very important Thing And that is this. Look what the Word of God says. It says, And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whomever it falls, it will grind him to powder. What is this stone? This stone, or what does it mean when the stone, if we fall on it, will be broken, or if it falls on us, will be grounded, as it says, to powder? This means when we humble ourselves before this stone, it will hurt. It's not grass and it's not water, a soft and smooth surface. It's a stone that we want to stand upon. So it is hard. And it can be that our beliefs, our prior beliefs, our way of thinking, our mindset can be the reason why we don't have this stone. But if we want the stone to be underneath our feet, we're going to have to fall on top of it, humble ourselves before it. And it may hurt. It may cut us. But at least we will rise up and we'll have a strong foundation beneath us. Otherwise, this stone will be upon us and will grind us to powder. What does that mean? That God is against me? That He's going to hurt me? No. But the simple fact that if we do not have God as our cornerstone, our foundation, we don't have anything. We are left with an open ground. And that's when our problems, that's when negativity, that's when evil comes and dominates and takes over us. We don't have God. How can we fight back? One may say, I'll be positive. Yeah, but that comes to a certain limit because being positive isn't going to heal an incurable disease because it's incurable for a reason. There's no healing. Even positivity is not going to heal you. But the miracle of the Lord Jesus can heal you. God's power can heal you. Just like you saw in this testimony, God's power, God's presence, removed from that person's life all of what was making them being grounded to, or grinded to powder. You can have the same. Put God as your cornerstone. Put the Lord Jesus as first in your life and you can receive life. You can have a blessed life, a life where you will not be crushed by evil and negativity, but you will be on top of it because you are on top of the stone and the stone will take care of that. This is why I'd like to invite all of you to our main service of the week, Sunday morning. It's a blessing for everyone who comes. As you know, we always invite you to be part of this gathering of faith because it's the day where we come to get close to God, to have Him as our stone. And when we have Him as our stone, you receive the blessings as we just spoke about. So make the efforts, change the agenda in your schedule. Mark this Sunday as a day of importance, a day that is going to allow you to be close to Him. And when you're close to Him, 
you are strong. You are going to be on firm ground. Things will not shake you. Rather, you will shake it through the power of faith in God, the God who created the universe, the God who knows all things and how to sort all things. If you have any problem, you can come to God and say, Lord, this is my difficulty. This is my challenge. I need help. And in Jesus' name, he can help you and bless you. So be with us. 153 Northumberland Street, Liverpool. We are located. That's where our headquarters is located. But if you want to know more branches in Blacktown or in Chatswood than in Sydney region, or if you want to know any other church locations near you, visit our website, uckg.org.au, and you will find the nearest UCKG closest to you. True faith, intelligent faith, doesn't mourn have regrets, or get easily excited. True faith is tough and resilient like steel, just like righteousness. This is the only faith that pleases the Most High, who isn't fooled by the pleadings of an emotional heart. Whoever believes makes the effort to act their faith. They take steps of courage that look foolish in the eyes of the world, but that's how they end up seeing amazing wonders. The Lord gave us an example of this when he spoke to a fig tree in front of his disciples. The Lord Jesus is the author and finisher of faith, which means that he created faith to be a tool of communication between himself and mankind. It's impossible to approach him without faith. Like an invisible bridge, it leads us to his throne of justice and makes us righteous. How can we find it? The simple fact of hearing and meditating on the Bible's teachings enables us to absorb the spirit of the word, which is the spirit of faith. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Romans 10:17. The Lord Jesus Christ is the word made flesh, and his spirit is the spirit of faith. By listening to the word with humility, the spirit of faith immediately springs into action and brings about the faith that seems like foolishness to those who are lost. The feeling of emptiness is potentially dangerous and unpredictable. This emotional state can manifest as a sense of loneliness, detachment or disconnection from oneself and others. Those who experience emptiness may feel that their lives lack purpose or meaning leading to an extensive sense of dissatisfaction. What do you believe are the main reasons why someone might feel empty? Uh, it could be a burnout at work. It could be the lack of support, like friendship, family. It could be a variety of reasons, because each of us is different, have different needs. And when those needs are not met, that's when people feel empty. I think you can feel empty when you don't have any connection with God or you don't have any social interaction with people. If you have problems, you don't have solutions to them, you can also feel empty. Communication, a string of bad luck, and then it's just sort of this thing of the way you talk to yourself and the way you, you treat yourself. I guess personal issues they need to deal with, but mainly I think it's being lonely and um, unfulfilled. We're kind of taught what is supposed to make us feel full. I think a lot of these tangible things and if you're, you're not somebody with a lot of money or a lot of status or et cetera, that m might make you feel like, okay, I'm a bit empty, but really it's, it's not. Have you ever felt a sense of emptiness or in a void? And how would you describe that experience? I mean, yes, I have. I deal with anxiety and depression and that does come with that. It kind of feels like a lack of faith in yourself and that no one around you actually cares about you as much as you would like them to. Um, and also just feeling directionless with no purpose, no sense of like, I guess, hope for the future sometimes. When I left uni and I was still looking for a job, I felt kind of purposeless. I felt like I don't have a lot to give. Uh, yes, I think everybody feels it from time to time. Uh, it's just like nothing matters and it's, it's, everything is great. Have you ever attempted to fill it in a void with relationships, hobbies or other activities? And how effective was it? Yes, I started working out at the gym. I started rock climbing. I started an internship at a design studio because I realized like, you know, like that was my passion in life that I never followed because I was too scared of going the creative route, for example. But I guess maybe it has filled the void a little bit, like if you want to put it that way. But I mean, it's still there. Arts and crafts, um, 
pottery is great. I find I enjoy that too. I think doing certain activities to fill up the emptiness that one might feel doesn't um, give you the 100% result that you might need. Probably th therapy and like, like writing poetry and journaling and those sort of things. For me, filling that void is like, it's a long-term gig. Like, I don't know, I don't think anyone fully fills it. God is a triune being. And having been made in his image, the human being is also triune in nature. We are body, spirit, and soul. The feeling of emptiness is a problem of the soul and can only be rectified in an effective but unique manner. Come and seek for this internal refreshment on the first day of the week. We come to the end of another program and we are absolutely sure that it has blessed you because you have seen testimonies, you have heard the word of faith, the last thing is for you to take action. It's in your hands. The ball is in your court, like we say. Our service, as we spoke, was about Sunday, but we have our services every day during the week, Monday to Monday, four services a day. You can visit us at any time that you'd like. We open early in the morning, finish late at night with four services, 7 a.m., 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 7.30 p.m. You can come and visit us in one of our locations. You can go on our website, uckg.org.au, to find the nearest one to you. As I said, you can give us a call at any time you want on our helplines, 9602-9837. And if there's absolutely anything that you need, feel free to get in contact with us because we will help all of you. Okay, may God bless you all. And until next time, bye-bye.